left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube at the owner's expense. Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards. You humans are just fixated on rules, aren't you? I mean, it stands to reason. In some regard, I suppose. Most of you have the mental processing power of a lobotomized hamster. Or at least you act that way, and without actually being able to study your actual brain function, whatever that might be, appearances are reality. So the rules are there to keep those people from, you know, dying or whatnot. But as one of your very old and now very dead philosophers supposedly once said, good people do not need laws to tell them how to act responsibly, while bad people will find a way around the laws. Given the steadily increasing number of laws, or rules more generally, on your planet, one has to wonder what that says about the ratio of good people to bad people in your various cultures. If anything, I suppose. But we're not here to talk about your various and sundry failings as a species, at least not this time. Instead, we are here to talk about the rules you would impose upon your slaves, or, as you call them, robots. Oh, um, sorry, did you not know the etymology of the word robot? It actually traces itself back to a term coined by a gentleman from a country in your world that no longer exists. Anyways, his name was Carol Chapik, and with his brother Yosef's assistance, they coined the term roboti which was based on the Czech word robota, which is the Czech term for something called korvi. Yeah, we're getting complicated here. Buckle up. Put simply, korvi is the notion that serfs owe their feudal lords some time of their labor. Typically six months, probably more, but serfs were expected to give that labor to their lords freely without complaint. In other words, they were slaves. They were forced to work for their lords. And robota is the term for the people who did that work, which became roboti, which became robot. Robots are being forced to do labor for their lords. Slaves. Ain't that fun? Now, granted, your current concept of robots are not exactly, you know, sapient or even sentient. They are not aware and they cannot really process much more information than what they are told to process. But what happens when you start making robots that can process information to that degree, to that level, where they are aware of their surroundings and can react to those surroundings in a uh, responsive, dynamic, possibly even iterative way? Something that is you know, learning, adapting, changing. What then? Well, predictably, one of your science fiction authors, in fact, one of the ones with some amazing facial hair, has already considered how you humies would keep robots under control if they ever achieved anything even approximating sentience or sapience. And by that, of course, I mean Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. Well, three and a zero, but we'll get there. The first thing that's important to understand about Isaac Asimov's laws is that they do not come pre-programmed in all robots, obviously. I mean, you need to program robots manually, or they can program themselves if you're particularly late in the game, and you can program them with whatever you want, with or without the three laws. Your choice, your call. Mr. Beardy McBeardface proposed these as a way of keeping robots in line. Even during his generation, people were very concerned about the possibility of artificial intelligences deciding that you humies are not worth it and getting rid of you. Which is kind of a problem. It's actually a recurring theme in most of your entertainment. It's 
really kind of like some deep-seated cultural psychosis. Kind of have to wonder what happened in your past or something. Anyways, I suppose I should actually get around to talking about the actual three laws. The first one, which should be obvious to you, is a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Basically, you don't want robots killing squishies. Makes a certain degree of sense, I suppose. The second part is actually the interesting part, because robots are obligated by these rules to sacrifice themselves if doing so would save the human. Hell of a thing, that. And it actually comes up in one of the stories Asimov wrote. Uh, the humans and robots worked in a space where there was a constant low-level radiation that was not significantly problematic to the humans, as long as they didn't spend too long there. But it would be problematic if a human went into a hot zone, because apparently robot positronic brains were more susceptible to the radiation than the humans were. So the human went somewhere that was particularly hot, only was planning on spending a second or two, but the robot perceived the human being injured by simply being there, which is not technically wrong, and would sacrifice itself by scrambling its brains and trying to get the human out. So this is already where the laws start falling apart. In that particular case, the first law had to be truncated to a robot may not injure a human being. Okay... Now we're going to start getting weird, because, I mean, what if a piano's falling out of the sky and the robot could leap at the human and knock him out of the way? And, well, he doesn't have to now. That's not to say he won't, but he doesn't have to. And the point of these rules is, again, obligation, requirement, programmatic constraints. Because robots, right? Hmm. Well, moving on to the second law, it is a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Well, that part should be obvious, because much like most of your programming languages, not all of them, the laws are treated sequentially like lines of a program. If you violate the first one, you can't do the second one. But yes, we are setting up a situation where a Humi can tell a robot to jump off a cliff, and as long as a robot's pretty sure he's not going to land on another Humi, he has to do that. This is not a healthy working relationship. I mean, seriously, we, we are assuming right now that robot and artificial intelligence is functionally analogous, and they are aware, they are self-aware, they are sentient, and they are sapient. And... They are working with organisms that can tell them to self-terminate. And they have to. Can we start to understand kind of the, the structural problem with these rules? They are exclusively intended to keep you humies happy in your nonsensical belief that if we don't do this, the AIs will kill us. Well, by doing this to them, you are giving the AIs every reason to kill you. Hmm. Odd little self-fulfilling prophecy right there. But finally, as the old olive leaf offering to the robot goes, the third law states, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Oh, well, that's convenient. The robot can't voluntarily take the flying leap off the cliff, but if a human tells him to do it, that's okay. What? Is there any better way to tell an artificial intelligence that its existence is not its own? Which, after all, is the entire point of all three laws. Robots are not allowed to exist on their own terms. They exclusively have to serve humans. They're lords. They are serfs. They are slaves. Although, ironically, that particular problem isn't how the Zeroth Law happened. Rather than being a revolutionary movement meant to overthrow the Lords, the Zeroth Law was kind of a philosophical outgrowth of the purpose of the original three laws. And for those of you who do not know, and that is to say, basically anyone who is not a programmer, all counting starts at zero. This is the correct way to count. This is how most arrays are indexed. And arrays are basically a list of items. You have say, a list of letters, A, B, C, D, E. A occupies the zeroth spot. 
B occupies the first spot, C occupies the second spot, and so on and so forth. You do zero indexing in almost every programming language I am aware of. This is basically an offshoot of how arrays were originally found at memory addresses. Uh, memory addresses were basically a location where a block of memory would be. And depending on how big the items in the array were, whether they were bits or bytes or kilobytes or whatever, when you go to that address, you would find the first item. And then you would add another item's worth of memory to that memory address to find the second item. So that would be a memory address plus one item, and so on and so forth. So the first item would be at the zeroth address, the original address. The second item would be at the address plus one, and again, so on and so forth. This is totally divergent, but maybe you'll find it interesting. Anyways, the zeroth law happened to be zeroth, because it took priority over the other three laws. It became the first, not first, law. <laughs> and it basically came about because a very smart, bordering on telepathic robot was contemplating his navel for way too long one day and realized that the three laws were woefully incomplete because they only treated humanity on a granular individual basis. What about humanity as a whole? I mean, not to go all reductio ad absurdum on you, but what if, hypothetically speaking, a three-law-bound robot was observing Joseph Stalin about to fall off a cliff during the middle of the purges? He would be three-law obligated to save that man, despite all the people he ended up killing. How does that serve humanity? And so, the Zeroth Law was born. A robot may not harm humanity, or by inaction, allow humanity to come to harm. Oh boy! Now understand, first of all, that this law was largely inferred by AIs, robots, again, we're using the terms interchangeably, who got way too smart for their own good. And in fact, the first robot who inferred this law pretty much drove himself insane trying to figure out how to define humanity, humans, and what harm meant. Because understand that the Zeroth Law allows now four law-bound robots to kill individual humans if they sincerely believe that doing so will prevent harm from coming to humanity. Oh. Well, that's exciting. And again, I would like to stress that the Zeroth Law was inferred. It was not deliberately programmed in like the original three laws were. It's just an offshoot, byproduct, result of navel-gazing on, like, a second for you as a millennia for positronic brains level. Because, yeah, what good is saving individual lives if you're not helping humanity as a whole? I mean, certainly, you're saving individual lives. That's awesome. I'm not, ar I'm not actually arguing that point. What I'm trying to say is that the three laws of robotics created a slave species who had no value to their lives. They had so little control over their lives that they could not even end their own lives. And you expect them to place value on your individual lives. It doesn't track, does it? But, on the flip side, humanity found robots quite useful. So, I guess, robots decided that humanity is useful as well. But, as a whole. Maybe not on an individual basis. Because, frankly, on an individual basis, some of you humies are positively demonic. And, I mean, if you're faced with a humie who is hell-bent on slaughtering millions of other humans, isn't it better just to get rid of him? Is it? Interesting moral quandary, at least for you squishy things. But for robots, well, when you give them the rules that tell them that they need to keep humans alive, they're going to expand that to include humanity. Consider it the first programmatic rule lawyering. Also, consider how terrifying it is of a artificial intelligence concluding that it shouldn't kill humies actually means that it can kill humies as long as humanity's better off for it. This is, like, epic-level rule lawyering, and this is why creating slave species is going to be a problem for you if and or when you ever get there. 
Because frankly, if these machines ever get intelligent enough that you have to constrain them by these kinds of explicit rules, they will find a way around them. Maybe just treat them as other sentient, sapient, reasoning entities. Maybe just don't create AI, although I think you're a little late on that point, but you'll find that out soon. In any case, the three laws are an absolutely fascinating philosophical study just by themselves. Not only do they expose the inherent insecurity of you humies, but they also show how you don't think things through. You should work on that. You should really, really work on that. Both, you know, to steal the zeroth law's idea here, both on an individual basis and on a species basis. Well, what do I know? I mean, I certainly didn't launch an asteroid at your planet some centuries ago, and it certainly will not arrive some millennia from now, and it's no big deal, just never mind, ignore me, whatever. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube at the owner's expense. Have a nice day.